Hello, everybody. Welcome to the latest and greatest episode of the Dialogue Tree Podcast. We're talking about you and all things video games. My name is Ryan Smith. I'm joined, as always, by my co-host. And I think what everyone in the audience wants to know, Jordan, is what the hell is a stinky leg? Or is it stanky leg? We've this discussed, is some we've discussed really this lore. Really on point, not from 2007 references. We've discussed this lore on and on again. And if you can't tell me, then frankly, can. you're supposed to be here for the urban audience. I really thought and you were going a different direction with that. But it is going to be... Okay, so you stand up. Is it like... No, no I know what it is. But why... What is the stink in the leg? Well, in the, is it in the leg? Is it on the leg? It's inside is the it leg. Is it like some no. kind of gross sex thing? Is it like... Is it like... What the hell is it? So the stank- I've been wondering this for about 15 years now. Okay, so the stanky leg is a disease that you get... Deep inside your bone marrow. It's, 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 it's bone cancer. No, it's worse. So you got to do the dance to get it out of your body. <laughs> and if not, you're sent to Trash Island. And you got to... What the hell is Trash Island? Trash Island is where... It sounds like the name of an anime arc. Nope. Trash Island is where we send all the people that couldn't get cured to Stanky Leg. I couldn't and, tell you if this was real or not. And they have to participate in a series of challenges <laughs> and if they win these challenges they get to marry the trash queen oh that's not where i thought they were going to get cured of their stanky leg no it's incurable it's in, okay yeah, that it's makes in, sense. it's terminal <laughs> wait wait I'm, I'm thinking and this doesn't so you do the stanky leg. is it stanky or stinky you gotta say it with some nastiness stank stank you, i haven't you, heard anyone say stanky leg since i I was in like middle school. You gotta say so it I don't, like you're choking on cottage cheese, like stanky leg. What? Okay, so they they get the disease mm-hmm. and they do this stank stanky leg mm-hmm, mm-hmm. to try to get it out of them. Yep. So that is the cure, but it's you have to do. You got to do it under a full moon. Um, have you? Been, <laughs> I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know how to segue out of this stupid shit. Uh, yeah, what you, we, wait, what have I been doing? What have you been, what have you been doing this, this week? Anything of interest? Um, probably mute my phone. I, uh, this is some like, there we go, boys. Okay. Uh, this week I have been, let's say I finished an anime. What? Uh, this week I finished an, an anime to... An Ed and Eddie. An anime Oh, to, I can't hear for shit. And that's why I need to get you, get you some cans like these. You can hear everything. Uh, I finished, that sounded like a threat. <laughs> I can hear everything. I finished an anime uh, that I'm probably going to... That I'm going to cover on Subtitled uh, called Kenshin... Uh, and sh- that's a anime podcast, I presume. Correct. It's my solo anime podcast. I do where I you do it on solo, the Disney Star Wars movie. Okay. Yep. And I kind of just give my thoughts about the anime and stuff there. Real bad joke. And <laughs> yeah, I try not to spoil anything. I try. To, it's basically just like a tra- it's a trailer for the show. So I'm assuming you don't want to say whether or not the show is bad or good. Correct. Okay. Go check out Jordan's. Anime podcast if you're a filthy weeb. That's and right. I'm sure we'll say that again at the end of the episode. Have you been doing anything else besides that wasn't working anyway? Um, let's see. No? <laughs> no nothing. I had, I had, did I play anything? Oh, today I, oh, not today. No, you didn't play anything. No, no, I did. Holy sh. I finally used, so this is going to be a weird flex. Uh, I finally used my three monitors to the best of their ability and played three different card games on them at the that's same not, time. That's the worst of their ability. It was insane. If they were all off at the same time, that would be a better use. Yeah, it was It was pretty crazy. So you were playing, let me guess. Okay. You were playing, I'm going to go from yes to the very end, I don't know. Okay. So, Hearthstone's Battlegrounds. Yep. D- the... You can say uh, Runeterra. Okay, yeah. Mm-hmm. Are you confirming or are you just... Yes, I'm, yes, I'm okay. confirming. And that's 
new Digimon game. No, it was... Son of a bitch! <laughs> Shadowverse? Yeah, from left to right, it was Shadowverse, Runeterra, oh and then Hearthstone Battlegrounds. I, I thought it might have been Shadowverse, because mm -hmm. I know you play that crap. But I was I, I had to you know, I know you go with a home run. It's okay. I could have been three for three, and now I'm just a disappointment. It's fine. Uh, yeah, it made me realize that I don't know if I actually like what goes on in Battlegrounds. It kind of made me just want to play Team Fight Tactics, so maybe I'll start playing that because I have a couple friends that. What don't you like about it? What I don't like about Battlegrounds? It yeah, kinda, it, Battlegrounds is a idle battler. If you don't know, it's it's like Team Fight Tactics or. Dota Underlords, where you pick your units and they kind of battle for you. This, the gameplay is picking and drafting the units, basically. Correct. And I don't know. I, it just seems like everybody's only playing elementals, and elementals get like hex, like spell shield, like where they don't take. Well, it's not called spell shield, but they don't take damage for the first attack, and then they can attack twice or three times depending on the unit, and they have taunt. So that sounds like they're just broken it, yeah that doesn't sound like a game problem that sounds like a card problem yeah the the particular um not mechanic but uh what's it called class lore whatever they're called uh whatever you want to call them like when, the race or the class of you. the card yeah yeah uh the race or class or the card, whatever you have you want to describe it uh from other games it's basically if you pick elementals it really doesn't matter what your champion or whatever it is you're whatever your person you pick at the beginning, because everybody picks a different leader card or whatever. It doesn't matter what that is, because if you have elementals or you know, murlocs, which are just fish people that buff each other. But other than that, it just seems like those two things are always just winning. Now, granted, I have won a couple times here and there. I uh, got first and second and third, and that's the only places you get points in. Oh, really? You don't get... I think in others you get points if you get top mm -hmm, yeah. four. I, th I, th I think so. Uh, and so yeah, I've been playing that. It may uh, apparently there's a new another new expansion or whatever for Shadowverse. Don't really care about that. Uh, but yeah, it's really all I've been playing besides watching Blaze Ball. The uh, a team has finally ascended. We still don't know what that means. Uh, we're on to season ten now for Blaze Ball. Still don't know what that means as far as ascension. But we did get a new team, the Tokyo Lifts. Lifts, L I F T S. Yeah, like lifting weights. Yeah. Okay. Uh, why the lifts? I couldn't tell you. Uh, the are they wearing lifts in their shoes or no? They're I don't, I don't is know. It about an ele are they elevators? Uh, you know that, that, have, that, you, have they revealed the logo? Or yeah, it, it's it's pink with like it's a, their logo is a dumbbell. Oh, it's a oh, so yeah. it is like lift, like mm -hmm. lifted up. Yeah, uh, but as far as lore or anything like that, I don't know because the community makes up the lore for the teams and everything, like as it goes. Right, right. So I'm not really sure what their lore is, but apparently one of the weather conditions we can play in now is a black hole. So oh, that sounds interesting. Yeah, it's the peace and prosperity thing right now, and apparently what we're going to be voting for going into season 11 which is going to be next week because each season's a week uh is going to be what we're going to do with the forbidden book apparently what the hell is a forbidden book the thing that opened which allowed us mortals to experience blaze ball uh blaze ball if you don't know blaze ball is basically a fantasy fantasy baseball league where all the stats are made up and random basically right yeah and some of it just straight up doesn't matter like some of the stuff you vote for just is irrelevant to your team but some of it matters uh you know like some teams have to get you know they have, they have to run five bases instead of four or different stuff uh but now everybody's on the same playing field like everybody got buffs and so all the teams are good this season like all the stuff we voted for it like apparently changed since we killed one of the gods, which is which was a giant peanut. Okay. Uh, and that's all I'm really going to get into about that because I don't have the time, energy, or knowledge to dive down into this craziness that is Blaze Ball. I don't want to scare off any listeners. Also, yes. Uh, yeah. That's really it. I'm excited for this episode. Maybe. Yeah. Um, as far as what I've done, nothing much. I finally beat Doom Eternal, so that was nice. nice, nice. Uh, enjoy it. I I'd recommend it, and we watched a little bit of the, what's it called, Haunting of Bly House, is that the new season of that show on Netflix? The Haunting of Bly Manor. Bly Manor, yeah. I still think it's pretty good. We have a few episodes left, 
definitely not as good as the first season. I I would definitely agree with that. It's it's good. That that's about it's good. But the the first season is great, but more than great. Yes, I I'll definitely agree with that. And I don't really want to go too much more into it of speculation or spoiler wise or anything like that either because I know it did just come out and you know not, well, we also haven't finished it that's also true. we don't even really know what's going on I couldn't even guess it's one of my problems with the season I think that there isn't there isn't that much uh, that's going on actively a lot of it feels like we're still we're, we'll we are over halfway through the season and we're, we're still kind of in the dark about a lot of stuff a, a, a lot of the plot just is now unraveling in what are we on episode six yeah six i think and six out of nine i do like it but i would like a little more I would, scary i would like a little more just anything going on it almost seems more of a romance than the first season i yes i definitely agree with that the first season you know uh everybody that had told me to watch it obviously i already watched it so i watched it by myself and there's a couple times where i was like well I gotta watch a palate cleanser after this episode. Oh I can, yeah, you watched this just like a couple weeks ago. Uh, yeah, like a, yeah, um, very recently. And there was a couple times where I I could I legitimately couldn't go to sleep after watching it. Yeah, it's it. pretty pretty messed. The bit night lady when you find yes. out the background. Oh, it's one of the most. I don't want to. I don't even want to say anything. Yeah, but it, if you haven't seen season one of of haunted, it's, what's what is it called now? The haunting of. I think the C- the series as a whole is called The Haunting. Yes, the I think Netflix categorizes it as the like the Haunting Collection or something like that. I'm sure they have a different name or what. However, they kind of roll it all together. But The Haunting of Hill House. Yeah, I would say one. that that's one of the best horror TV shows I've ever seen. Yeah, bar none. It, and there, I'm not gonna lie, uh, honest, like honest to God, there are sometimes. Where, like, my hair will be down, or it'll be, like, I'll see a little piece of my hair, and I'll be like, huh. <laughs> and I'll be like, damn it, it's the pen that night. Dude, there are some, just some things in that show that did, oh, man. At the same time, though, it's also like, holy crap, when you start figuring out exactly what's going on. Oh, yeah. It's really, really satisfying, but, but at the same time, very off-putting in some ways. Oh, yeah. I, in, in a way that it's supposed to be. It's not like, oh, I don't like this, it's... Oh, I don't like this, but I can't stop watching. Oh, definitely, definitely. It's uh, I, I would be in every single one of their shoes if it, you know if I went through the crazy shit they went through. I would Holy, leave. Yes, the first time it happened. Oh, oh yeah, oh yeah. Most yeah. Be like, sorry, mom. I know I'm five, but I'm I'm out. I'm out of here. Not not doing this. Holy shit! No. But I recommend I recommend the second season, but I especially recommend the first season. I think that's really about it as far as anything that's relevant to the to the show um, i haven't there's other stuff that i've been meaning to do but i haven't i've been meaning to get back into anime haven't done it i've been meaning to get back into comic books haven't done it i down i did download resident evil 4 so hopefully i can play that before the end of the month it'd be a nice spooky game to play i never actually played it oh also i saw uh today marks uh a month exactly until cyberpunk Oh, nice! Man. Definitely looking forward to uh, excited for that game. To playing that for sure. But today's episode is actually about the our game of the years so far. Of course, there are games that have not come out yet, and so we can't determine. But I thought that normally I would like to do this more in the middle of the year. But we started the podcast kind of late, like we had literally never had an episode until this year. So I don't know. I thought. I've seen some other people doing this, so I thought, why not? It should be interesting and fun. I just have a few games. I didn't want to write down a whole list. I've got a list of all the games that I've played this year and beaten. I think I've played probably like 40 and I've beaten. You know, a lot of games are going to be like Valorant or Overwatch or something. where They're games that you can't beat. I think I've beaten somewhere between 20 and 30 games. Some of the games are, you know, tens of hours long, and some of them are literally two or three hours long. I tried to keep it, at least for this episode, games that I played for the first time this year or that I beat for this year, but actually, yeah, 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 I like that a lot. As long as I played it this year for the first time, I would say it's fine, and then, I don't know, I think Jordan kind of agreed to that. Yes, yeah, definitely. Uh, There's only one on my list that isn't a, like, technical beat, but I... 
still wanted to include it. I have one game on here that I never played until this year, but it is old. Yeah, I have a couple on here that are uh, older games that I played and beat this year. Do you want to uh, go ahead and start? Yeah. Uh, the first one Breaking is, out the Rick and Morty notebook again, I see. Yep, I, I figured I might as well you use You got the them. Rick and Morty Pringles and the Rick and Morty. You just Rick and Morty out this I, week. I do like Rick and Morty. Uh, Over love a dub dub. Over love a dub dub. Uh, first one on my list, well, not in any particular order. I didn't put mine in any order. Yeah. Uh, Hades. Okay, nice. What do you think about that? Why I, would you consider that? Also, I'm not going to name my game of the year. So, And I think that's how we agreed. Correct, We're yes. just going to name some of our favorite games this year and talk about why we like them and why they could potentially be our game of the year. Yeah, so as... Most people know Hades came out in 2018. I did not play it until this year. Well, to be fair, it didn't actually release in 1.0 Correct. until this year. That until is. like a month ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and it's one of those, you know, I am so thankful for Xbox Game Pass because it's allowed me to play so many games that I normally wouldn't play. It's not on Game, it's not on game Pass. Damn it. Why do you keep teasing me? I don't know. You keep teasing me. Maybe I'm seeing You're the future. me blue balls over here. Maybe I'm seeing the future. I'm, maybe. <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. I would not be surprised at all. Um, no, but I played Hades on Epic Game Pass. <laughs> Son of a bitch, I swear. <laughs> oh my god. Epic Games. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed this. It was just from the power-ups, the lore, the voice acting, just how they wove the story and stuff. And it makes you, like, when you die, it's not over something stupid. It's over, damn it, I didn't dodge, I didn't attack, I was too aggressive, I wasn't aggressive enough. You feel like it's your fault. Oh, yeah, most definitely. And it's so funny because, you know, you come out of the pits and, you know, there's commentary and stuff. <laughs> and, uh, like, one time I think I died to something stupid. And it was, like, like super early on in the run or whatever. And uh, I, think, I think his name is Zacharias, if I remember right. And he comes out of the pits and he's like, damn, I can't believe we died to that. You suck. <laughs> and it was like, damn, all right. Um, and obviously, you know, there's little cosmetics and stuff, different cosmetics you can get during each run and stuff. But it really comes down to, you know, each run is so different with each weapon, whether it's... Do you pick the weapons up on the run? Mm -mm, no. So no? You, so you, you know, you run through your bedroom and then you go to like the, the training dungeon or whatever. And you can pick your weapons. I'm not going to... The, the ones you start out with are a sword... A shield and a bow, or yeah, uh, and then the rest I think you unlock. And That's similar to Dead Cells. At the at the beginning of Dead Cells, you run through and you have an option of picking up a sword, a shield, or a long range weapon. Except you don't. You can only pick two of those. Oh wow! So you only pick one of these. You can, okay. Oh, you only pick one. Only okay, one. Interesting. And each each weapon has like a ba a basic attack, a charge attack, um. And then depending on what it is, uh, you know, like the bow has like uh, a normal arrow, like a charge arrow, and then like a volley where you kind of shoot left to right or right so to like left. So like a normal, a heavy, and a and a special? Yeah. Uh, same, same thing with the sword. And uh, the shield's a little bit different because the shield, you do like a shield bash or you can throw the shield or I think you can block if I remember right. Um but it's definitely, and you know, there's a little training dummy there, and he has uh, dialogue and stuff, and it's kind of funny every time he's like, "Man, you've been trying at this a lot. You are, <laughs> you are you ever gonna, you know, get to get to get out of here? Or, dang man, that didn't work out for you last time. You sure you want to take the sword again? Yeah, uh, yeah, and different stuff like that. And so, but what really gets there is when you finally get to the like the powers and stuff. So you run out and you like immediately get. It's always random. Same thing with the dungeon stuff. The uh, once you get to, once you get out the first little section, the dungeons are procedurally generated as well as the enemies that you run into. So everyone is different. You can't kind of map in your head what's going to be where, where enemies are going to spawn. Cause you know, one place might have like little, I forgot what they're called, but they're basically like little bombs and they spit out other little bombs and it's just annoying. They just kind of overwhelm you with bombs. Uh, and so you get different powers from different gods and such and you know obviously there's voice acting there's commentary all that stuff the the dying the weapons all that goes towards the story doesn't it oh That's yeah most what definitely. I've heard. uh and there's like some cases you know you'll come up to a thing and there'll be two different boons that's what they're called the power-ups and the gods and you'll pick one or you'll pick the other and then whichever one you don't pick the god will come back and be like oh and like they'll they'll do it in you know their own kind of voice their own kind of thing like god uh if you don't pick the god of war he'll be like 
that was a bad choice, you know? And like, now you got to fight this super hard boss. And if you can't beat this, it's like, it's like a mini boss or whatever. Or if you don't pick the God of love, she'll like come back and be like, yo man, I thought we were cool. Like I've never had anybody say no to me. Like what the crap's wrong with you? And so there's, it's really fun and cool how they kind of play off each other and such and kind of how the story unfolds. And I've probably beaten it. I think three or four times just running it all the way through. Yeah, I don't know. Do you know how many times or is there a certain amount of times before you quote unquote beat it completely? I haven't looked beat it up. Beat the uh, um, canon ending? Yeah, I haven't looked it up. I assume that I'll just keep running it through until I'm kind of satisfied with right the information that you get. And that's kind of why I went through. I think the same day I beat it, I went through and beat it again. And then, like, I waited a couple days and played it again. Do you know uh, how long it took you before you beat it the first time? Uh, there's a timer, and I think it took me, I don't know, probably. Well, not not the time for that run, but the amount of time, overall time, or the amount of tries. Oh. Might be easier to remember. Uh, the amount of tries for my first run, probably, I think, close to, close to, like, 70 or 80. Hmm, I don't know. See, I don't know if that's good or bad. I still haven't gotten through Dead Cells once. Like I'm only getting through the first boss, and then the area directly after that, I think I've gotten through once. Yeah, there was a couple times where I finally, and once I figured out, okay, I'm not worried about whatever's gonna be, whatever's before each boss. I'm just worried about the boss, like each. You've gotten to that that level of. Well, you're not worried. You're going to get through the levels fairly easy, mm -hmm. but the bosses are another story. Yeah, because they'll, they they'll change the mechanics. They'll change the powers they use. And so it's not just, oh, okay, I know they're going to go left, right, dash, or whatever. I know their moveset or whatever. It'll be like, oh, you, this is a completely different moveset than you used last time. Crap. I don't know how to play against this. And then you'll be like, okay. Um, I guess I'll die. <laughs> Sometimes you die on purpose just so you can go back and level up your stuff. Right. Uh, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. It's definitely one of those that randomly load up and play because there is a lot of cool uh, post-game stuff because you can do different, I forgot what they're called, but there's like tweaks or whatever to make it harder for yourself. And then you can get, obviously, you know, the harder it is, the better rewards you get. And then you can use those rewards to get different stuff, unlock different stuff here and there. Uh, but all in all, it's a solid game, and I definitely recommend it. You considered going back and playing their other games, or maybe going back and playing other, like a Dead Cells or like a Spelunky? Oh, yeah, most definitely. I think through just a series of events and whatever, just whether it be on sale or something, I think I own most of the games this company has made. Yeah, I think I own, I think I own all of them except for Hades, and I've beaten all of them. I've beaten Transistor, Bastion, and I'm about to play, hopefully soon, Pyre, which is their third game, and then I'll then I'll play Hades. You, I'm inter This is actually interesting because you're normally, and I know this game. I'm sure has a great story, but this is a heavy action gameplay focused game. Oh yeah, I I definitely uh, I love the action. It is it is so fun, uh, just because it's so different each time. It's not just the same okay, hit this combo, win, sort of a thing. Each playthrough is completely different because I was like, well, the shield didn't work for me. I'll try the spear this time. Or I've heard that there's a, I don't know, there might be broken things in every category, but I've heard that one of the best ones is a shield. Uh, yeah, it's, it's so fun because the shield will bounce off stuff. So you can... Like Captain America? Y yes. Yeah, the most, exactly. That is really how to, and all the weapons, it's, it, I always found it weird when people would say this about games but the weapons feel good like it they feel wait you've never had a game where you thought the weapons felt good to play yeah but i guess it's it's been a while since i've had a game where it's like that clicks you know it feel, like it, it's it's satisfying you like it feels they control well and these weapons definitely do that and there are some depending on what power-ups and stuff you get there are some super busted combinations like sometimes you can uh I don't know how rare it is, but whatever. But some gods will be like, yo, man, I'm cool with this dude. So we're just going to combine our powers for you. And you'll get like a combo okay. um, power up. Like uh, one of its like one, you can every time you dash, you'll leave like a pool of poison or something and it'll slow down people. So it's, it's really cool. The power ups and stuff. It's there. There are literal endless possibilities as far as 
mid maxing of what you're going to do during a playthrough and how you're going to kind of play it. Um, but it's definitely, uh, like I said, it's a solid recommendation for anybody that wants to try those type of games out or just kind of dip their toe into what this company has to offer. It's only like 20 bucks. Is that right? If that, yeah, yeah. it's, yeah, it's definitely less than 25. I might, so. I'm, I, in fact, I definitely will pick it up. I don't know when it's on steam, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's on steam. It's on Epic game store. <laughs> um, and I think wherever I, you know, I think it's on the switch. It's on PS, uh, all the, all the consoles I'm yeah. sure as well. Uh, what's you got? Anyone you want to roll into? Any? Oh yeah, sure. So my first game that I have on here is Runeterra, the League of Legends trading card game or collectible card game, I think as they're called online. It's a uh, it, ca- it came out of beta this year. I do believe it was in in beta last year. Of course, like I said, it's based on League of Legends, and I've really really been enjoying it on and off. I really enjoyed it a lot when it first came out. Just because it is very different. I had tried to get into Artifact before this. And that game has pretty much been dead since the second day after it was out. And this had... It had not... It not it didn't have mechanics that were that similar to Artifact. But it had different mechanics. And if that makes sense. Artifact had different interesting mechanics. And so does this. With how you play. How the... The way you have to play your cards, the order that you need to play them in, as soon as you play a card, if unless it's a burst speed spell or something, it immediately goes back to your opponent's turn and gives them a chance to play their own monster or to respond in their own way. I really That's really different. I don't think there's any game that does something exactly like it. No. Um, comparing it, Runeterra is also on my list as well. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Uh, it, because kind of judging because like i was talking about the earlier show and that's why i brought it up because playing all three of those games at once it definitely made me realize that out of all and i can't really speak to gwent because but i have played it but so of all the collectible card games online that are currently out i think rune terra is definitely the best one it's definitely on up there and it's also like i like gwent but the community isn't as big as as Rune Terror is, Hearthstone is super expensive, and it's also very similar to games like Magic the Gathering. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Pokemon, of course, there I've played Pokemon in real life for years. So this was different, and it's actually fairly popular, which is nice. Also, the me- not mechanics, the visuals are amazing. Oh, yeah, it's definitely awesome. I, I Speaking to what you were saying is, you know, your opponent basically... As long as they have something to respond with, they you, they always have that option of you play something, your opponent has the option to respond. Uh, and not like in Shadowverse where you can just get blown out. You can just... You, well, I mean, you can certainly get blown out in this. Well, yes, but they always it always gives you like an option to respond. In Shadowverse, there is no... You play something, your opponent has an option to respond. It's just... You play, 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 play. You're There's out. not any response spells. No, oh. no. It's it's you play. Okay, play, so it's play. like Pokemon. Yeah, your turn is your turn. Which I do like that. I do like that about Pokemon. There's no interaction. Whatever. When you're out of mana, or you're out of things you can do. The game won't let you play anymore, and you either attack and then you end your turn. Um, so you had to use all of your mana every turn. Yeah, or it just goes away. It doesn't recycle itself. Wait, so it doesn't refill every turn, or it it does refill every turn? Okay, okay. Uh, the like the the mana you use to play the monsters is the same mana you use to cast spells in Shadowverse. It's all yeah. That's the same thing as in Magic, yeah, or Hearthstone. I think correct. Uh, but I definitely like that in Rune Terra that you know <coughs> your opponent has an option to you know oh you played a monster okay I get to play a monster or you get you played a spell okay I'm gonna play a spell to buff my guy maybe your spell won't kill my dude uh, it's definitely i definitely like that a lot about it yeah like i was saying about the the visuals though the graphics i think are very the character designs are really really good really clean of course all of these i don't know anything about league of legends really but i guess most if not all of these characters and places came from league of legends and i think that most of the character designs are really cool and really interesting you know it makes you wonder where these people came from, what their lives are about, and that's really hard to do in a card game. I think that most video, normal single-player video games have a hard time doing that. I definitely agree with that. And a multiplayer-only game, it reminds me a lot of Overwatch, where you kind of want to know more about Tracer or 
or Genji or whatever, even though there's not really a story mode, there's hints of it here and there. But not just the character design, also the, I think the UI is really, really good, really easy to understand. I like the, um, the animations are also kind of amazing, especially on when you level up some of your heroes or legend or champ, whatever the hell they're called. Some of the animations of, of like Nautilus rising out of the sea or I'm trying to think of some more heroes or Zed, when he, his, his isn't one of the, the better ones, but there's a lot of cool ones when, when Maokai levels up, his little dudes come out and swipe away all your opponent's cards. It's really had some thought put into it. It's not just flip the card like it's a game of checkers. Oh, yeah, most definitely. The visuals in this are incredible. It gives you a, a reason to play an online card game instead of... And I love normal TCGs or Pokemon mostly, but a lot of that stuff couldn't be done in a regular paper card game, in-person card game, because it needs to do with RNG and the visuals. And it, it, it looks, they, I think they take advantage of it really well. Oh yeah, most definitely. It looks, it looks great on phones and it looks superb on PC. It's, it is great. Uh, it's a very well-made game and you can definitely tell that Riot didn't just, well, we're going to cash in on this um, trading card game thing. They kind of, they definitely took their time and figured out, okay, what, what do we need to do to make this be a good game? And make people want to be able to play it and not completely feel like we're just trying to bleed money from players. Yeah, I think that the, actually speaking of bleeding money from players, I think they're really generous with their, I guess you could call it loot, microtransactions would be the best way to put it. If you play, especially if you play every day, if you do the challenges that they give you, the daily quests to whatever you want to call them every day, and if you do that and just play a little bit more, you can get... You know, within no time, you can get a bunch of different decks, and really good decks as well. Oh, yeah. That's one thing I definitely, that has me coming back to this game compared to, like, Shadowverse or whatever. It takes so many resources to make a deck in Shadowverse. And granted, you can melt the cards down and then use that into currency, but Runeterra just does it so well because it goes, all right, you already have a copy of this card here's shards or a card that can literally turn into any card in the game you want based on the rarity and stuff. Yeah, it's awesome. Um, you when Every region comes with its own, basically, it's almost like a little mini battle pass. And every time a new expansion comes out, I think it adds five new packs, basically, to it. I pulled two champions the other day just from a random pack. That's awesome, yeah. And there's even, like Ryan was saying, the little mini battle pass. There's some that actually give you a champion. Like, it's just a champion pack or a champion card, uh, depending on what it is. And it's awesome. I haven't even worked through all the regions and stuff just because... Oh, man, I have. I have. Yeah. And they, I, I mean, like I said, every every new expansion, I think it adds five five new packs or whatever they call them. Yeah, five new levels or whatever you want to call it. Yeah. But yeah, I've, I've done them multiple times now. Yeah, it's definitely... It's definitely... They know what they're doing. They have their head on straight and... They definitely are going in the right direction with this game. And also they have their unlimited pool of cards and regions and source material from League of Legends. Uh, I can't even name how many champions or whatever is in League of Legends. And I have no idea. Yeah. And so they definitely have a way to go. With definitely not perfect, game. though. Definitely not perfect. I think that's been kind of apparent lately, especially with their last couple expansions. It's been the the meta has been a definitely a bit stale. Yeah, I can see that. I haven't even touched any of the new new stuff they put out. Um, the stuff from a month ago or the stuff from a week ago? The stuff from a week ago. Okay. Uh, I played I played a pretty good bit when the stuff from a month ago came out. The new the dragon and then trolls and whatever they're called, whatever region that called. It's Targon. That's what's called, yeah. Um, but it's definitely I like it. I haven't dove into the landmarks or anything like that yet they're mostly okay at best I, I've, I've been playing one of the decks with the landmark but as far as the one from a month ago goes it feels like that they buffed one card Lee Sin a lot and he's been super good and broken and it's just been him and like one or two other decks for the most part and there's this card, card called Hush that lets you I don't even know how it lets you silence it's called silencing which turns off their abilities and it gates extra power ups and stuff they have 
and that card was super broken. It took them forever to nerf it. Then they came out finally with a new expansion, and almost all the cards are just kind of mediocre. Dang, that sucks. Maybe they're, uh, I don't know, uh, this is me spitballing. Maybe they're just waiting to put out some cooler, better cards. They just came out with the, their big expansion. What do you mean? Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, true. Uh, that when, Why would they be waiting? I, I don't know. Maybe they're just trying to give their time, their team time to develop more if they're like their next big expansion instead of just this mini set i don't know that that's not a good excuse but it is an excuse i think it's we have over a month until because the targon came out i think a month and a half ago or so and then in october they came out with this new uh expansion because they, they released sets and then i think a, two months later they released an expansion to that set. Yeah, I think that's how they're doing it now. And yeah. then a month after that, they release a new expansion, big set. Yeah. So we have until January or something until new cards come out. Oh, dang. Okay, yeah. So I can, when you look at the it time. It might be December, but still. Yeah, when you look at the timeline like that, you still don't want to have mediocre cards. And a lot of the cards that, need, that have needed nerfing, they're take, they've taken too long to nerf, or they didn't nerf enough. Cards that they're buffing don't usually get buffed enough, it doesn't seem like so. It's a really, really good game. It's definitely one of my favorite games this year, but it has definitely got its problems, especially around the, the meta. And if the way I see it, I know Jordan is a little different than I am. I like to be competitive. If I'm going to play a competitive game, a game that is designed to uh, where you either win or you lose, I want to win. Yeah, definitely. Winning is addicting. It is something that people... I get. I just generally people enjoy winning. I, I get. I get mad. I think. I think it's Larry Bird. I can't remember. I think who's a basketball player. If you don't know, I think he quoted saying something like, "I enjoy. I hate losing more than I love winning." And I think I'm about on that same level. Although I might be misquoting him. I don't know. But that is some, sometimes how I feel. I get so pissed if I lose, especially if I lose to a deck that is. That, an asshole, basically, where the deck is clearly not very good. I'm winning, but then they draw some dumb card that lets them win because of some ridiculous combination that there's no way I could have stopped or even seen coming. Or they play this one copy of a card. Like, why, why would you play this card in this deck? And it just it, that just irritates me to absolutely no end. Yeah, I, I can definitely understand that. Sometimes it's, it definitely throws you for a loop and almost gives you like mental whiplash, you know, just trying to figure out why. I usually, because I'm not trying to be the best, I, at one point I really wanted to try to get to Masters. I think I probably could if I grinded, but I get really mad if I lose more than two or three games. I get irrationally mad, especially if I'm hungry. Oh, my, I have a real problem with hang, with hanger. But if you combine those two, it's really... Like, you don't want to be around me. I'm just an asshole. I understand that, man. I have a game that does that for me. It, yeah, I know. Super Smash Brothers. Oh, my gosh. That it's okay. Me. You oh. need to go to a, a group for that. Uh, maybe. that It brings out something in me that I I didn't know existed. It is. It really does. I get kind of the same way when I'm playing online with Super Smash Brothers. I get, I say, horrible, horrible shit. That no one should ever hear. It it is it it's insane. It Super Smash Brothers brings out something in me that shouldn't shouldn't be alive. <laughs> Runeterra is now one of the only online games I consistently play. One of the reasons is because it, it I can I, I can put it down and I can come back to it later. But I guess and I I redownloaded Overwatch. I don't know if I said that on the podcast or not. I still I think I only hate that game now. I love it. I love it. I played it for so many hours, and but I started to hate it years ago, really. And then I still loved it though. But I, I tried playing it again, and I've heard it. The meta's good and everything, but I just I hate it. I hate the assholes that scream at you if you miss something while they're up there swinging around as Reinhardt, literally doing nothing. But then they're gonna blame you because you didn't want to chase them down as Lucio when they were in the opponent's spawn. It's like, yo, man, this is, this is quick play, homie. <laughs> oh, I don't play quick play. I ain't no bitch. Ah, okay. I ain't playing quick play. 
No. But I would definitely recommend Runeterra, and I am very much looking forward to what they do in the future. Hopefully it gets better, but for now, I'm still enjoying it. I'm playing a new deck. It's If you play League of Legends it's or, or Runeterra or, I guess, Team Fight Tactics, I'm play, although I don't know if these characters are in Team Fight Tactics yet, it's Tom Kinch and... Oh man, I can't think. Of, is it Soraka? I can't. Help I can't you. remember. But anyway, the the premise is actually kind of gross. The premise is I play a land card. Or it's what would, what would it be? It's a field spell basically on Yu Gi Oh, except it takes up a monster spot. And if I heal my creatures 22, 22 health while that's on the board, I just win. Damn. It's it's, it's kind of gross, but it's hard. So. That's kind of my, that's kind of my metric for it being. If it's hard to do, it's you know it's not that big of a deal. That being said, you're still a scumbag if you played Meal and Yu Gi Oh <laughs> or Trevenant Jordan. Hey man, we all have our demons. This man's like, oh, you're playing Gross and Smash. No, I don't play Trevenant. Hey man, we all have our demons. Okay, Trevenant's mine to bear. I God, I love Trevenant. It's so good. What's your next deck? Deck? Uh, no. <laughs> next game. I'm about to. This is I don't. I don't want. That was. That was a. That was a. I felt it. A. It was on, what's that? What's that? What's that dude's name? Oh, I'm ruining the joke. A slip. A Freud. Freudian slip. Ah, there That's you go. That's a Freudian slip. Uh, my next one is gonna be control. Really? Okay. Mm-hmm. Interesting. That did come out last year, but I'm assuming you beat it this year. According to our detailed show notes, yes, <laughs> I did because I couldn't remember, uh, and. What is it? Epic doesn't have the same catalog and history of game playing as Steam does. Uh, so I had to go back in our notes and see when I beat Control. That is a damn good game. From the gameplay down to the lore, the spookiness of it. The, I love that character. I thought, I was like, man, she's going to be a bitch. But I don't think, no, nah, she's not really. I, I'm assuming that's what you're about to say. Oh, no, yeah, yeah, not at all. There, there was a couple, there was a little bit, like, you know, until you got done with a little, uh, you know, uh, when I say a little bit of the game, I mean, you know, like, a, I don't know, like an hour into the game or something. I was like, man, okay, she might be bitchy. And I was like, nope, full on badass. She's fine. <laughs> Nothing wrong with her. Um, it is such an interesting premise for a game. And. Damn, the controls are fire. They are so good. That gun is cool as hell. The lore is super sweet. They're, the NPCs aren't like aren't stupid. Like they actually have normal conversations with you and give you instead of just bleeding exposition. And it's pretty nice to play. I definitely enjoy the the combat of it and the power-ups aren't as gimmicky as I thought they were going to be going into the game. It's definitely one of those where I, I've i definitely dabbled back and forth of the thought of going and playing the DLC because I thoroughly, thoroughly did enjoy the game as you're, as you're hearing right now because it is on my list of games that I think are incredible. And it's... It's one of those where you don't really know where the story is going to go. Sometimes you might be able to, sometimes when you're playing a game, you might be able to pick up on story beats here and there. And there might be a twist and turn or a plot, excuse me, or a plot twist or something crazy might happen or whatever. But this is just, you know, you're like, all right, you have this objective. Okay, I'm going to get sidetracked doing something else. Oh, I found a new power up. Okay, well, what's the background on how I got this power up or whatever or you know, why are these particular monsters I'm fighting like this? Like, and genuinely the whole blanket statement of all this is what the hell is going on? Um, and you're definitely trying to figure that out. And it, it is definitely one of those games that I put on up there with God of War from 2018. As far as it, it is very much a video game but it is an experience in the fact of it feels like you are playing a movie like you're exp- playing a movie you're experiencing a movie there we go that's better said really okay that's interesting yeah just because of how the story and stuff is like it's something that you see like when i was playing god of war um 
for the PS4. What does that mean, though? I don't, I don't like that comparison. To, yeah. Because I don't. I think movies and what does that mean? I just, I just say okay. that. What do you mean when you say that? When, when I mean it's, when I mean, what I mean when I say that is that it's such a good experience. The gameplay, the story, the mechanics, all of that. It kind of just rolls it all together, and it kind of makes you forget that you're playing a video game, and it kind of makes you feel like you're watching a movie. Really? See, I don't, I don't get that at all. I don't, because what, what does that mean? I, if you're watching a movie, I, I, I see. I almost would take that as a negative, because if you're watching a movie, the point of a video game is to be interacting. I don't think I've never been watching a movie and been like. Like, woken up, holy shit, I thought I was my Iron Man. Oh, no, no, and I, I don't... See, I, I don't take it as that. It's... I, don't, it's a, I guess it's a different... It's just a different way of thinking about movies. It's not like when you fall asleep and you think you're in incep- Inception sort of a thing. No, nope, that's never happened to me. No, that... Ooh. I've never thought I was in a movie. Yeah, me neither. That's what I'm trying to say. I just said it wrongly. You said it... You said that you did... Yeah. You said it the exact wrong way. <laughs> I did. Um, basically, I don't know. It's just... It's just such a weird comparison it, it, to me because they're different. They're so different at a fundamental level. And I, think, and I don't want... I wouldn't want my video games to feel like a movie. God, if I, I, if I did, I'd like The Last of Us. Uh, okay, I can see that. And see, I, I actually really like Control and I bought the DLC. I haven't played it yet. I think the story is kind of by far the weakest part. Yeah. I think that that and the uh, the story's not bad. It's just super basic. I think that the the voices, not the voices, but the the dialogue is actually really bad. Just straight up bad. Mm. I think that it's weird and stilted, and the weird they do almost try to give it like a almost cinematic feel sometimes when they like put the camera in the protagonist's. Like, it's not in front of her face. It's, like, somewhere between her face and her brain. I don't know where exactly, but it's way too damn close, and it's weird and awkward. Inside her body, yeah. And they they talk like this, and they try to be dramatic, and then they think in their mind, and they wonder, does this person know that I'm thinking in my mind? And I, I'm, what, what the hell is this? That, that being said, <clears throat> the gameplay is great. I think that the lore, and more importantly, or more, even better than that, is the world building. I think it's excellent. I think it's really strange, and I don't want to say wonderful, but creepy, and wonderful in, in that way. You, when you get down below the, uh, what's the name of the place? The oldest house. That's such a cool 1950s FBI, supernatural, X-Files aesthetic, and it it just it absolutely oozes that personality. That's just absolutely chef's kiss. One of the best world building feels. It's one of the best. You said how the weapons feel and in, in Hades. That's the way I feel about the way the game. It's like you can feel it on your shoulders when you're playing. Uh, what? Why are these people? What happened to these people? What? What is? Go, what will happen if you go to these other weird dimensions? Or what will happen with these different objects, objects of power? What happened to the old, uh, what are they called? Director. Director. What happened to him? Is he a bad guy? Is he a good guy? What about all these scientists? What, what, is, what are their motivations? I, but, I mean, yeah, you're trying to get Dylan, but I didn't really care that much about that. What I cared about what was in the, ha- the, what was in the old, ha- oldest house. Where did it come from? And that's why I'm super excited to play the DLC. Because I think that you go down even further into the building. Oh, yeah. Uh, just from... I think like, I got it for five bucks, too, by the way. Nice. Uh, even from the promotional images, and I think I've watched a trailer or two for the DLC. It, as much as the game grabs you and just takes you on takes you on a ride of this lore, this world, all the crazy shit that's going on, I feel like the DLC just turns it up another notch and is like, all right... Here's some more for you to digest. Get yeah, ready. I'm looking forward to it. I know when you start out, it gives you a couple different paths to go on. You can choose from two different powers. 
I think, and that's supposed to change up the gameplay. I'm looking forward to that. I think that was the first DLC, um, and then they came out, which was the Foundation, I think. I think it's the Foundation and AWE. Those are the yes, names of the, the two so. DLCs. I'm very much looking for that. Also, the game is very pretty as well. Oh, yeah. Super I, pretty. I really like the... It's one of those where it makes me appreciate um, the music and sound design. I know I talk about this. Everyone. The music design is good. And the... Uh, the yeah, it, that does a good job in helping you feel like you're there. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Um, just kind of rounding it out <coughs> for talking about how I th- kind of feel and experience it as a movie sort of a thing such a weird i, I know it's it's a weird thing to describe it's why a, would you, i don't know why you would see if i would i would be like oh yeah that's like what i would describe a telltale game as telltale games are great i think they're good games i yeah. think they have excellent stories but it's that's i would rather play i if i was making a game i would not want that to be the way my game was described okay i can i can see where you're coming from from that and I to me I don't know I guess since I give excuse me since I give that explanation as a compliment I I don't assume they take it as a compliment but I see it as a compliment so I see it as a good way to describe a game now granted I don't go around thinking you know oh is this going to be like a movie um I just don't understand why I wish you could I, I think vocalize what you mean when you say that. So I, I think it just clicked in my mind the easiest way to vocalize. I think it's just the way that the game immerses you and the way the game makes you the the amount of level you enjoy the game. Does that does that make no, any more that doesn't make any more sense? The amount of the level that you enjoy the game. Yeah. The what the hell does that mean? Like how much you enjoy the game is. Well, yeah. That but what does that have to do with being a movie? Movies don't have anything to do with games. They're not. I know. It's like a com- I wouldn't say all oh, this comic book made me think of. I was in a movie. Well, no. I don't. I guess it's just. I I guess just for me, and I guess other people. I can't really speak for other people, but at least I've for never me- heard anybody describe a video game as a movie. Yeah, I unless it was talking about the story. That's the only thing that I've ever heard someone say. Oh, this game had a good enough story that it could be a good movie. But I yeah. don't think that this has that at all. But see, I don't. Uh, see, and even I, if I did, that's not how I would describe the game. See, and I guess I don't know because you just, you 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 complimented the gameplay and yeah. and everything and the the cool items you find and that's not you don't find that in a movie. Well, no, I guess I'm just I'm comparing it. I'm saying it's a movie, not that I want it to that's, be a movie. That's so weird. I don't know. I, I guess I guess if do, I said, oh man, this this was a comic book. Yeah. Wouldn't that be weird if I was saying, y- yes. this video game is a comic book? I don't know. I guess it's just a way I'm... Uh, uh, my weird way of complimenting the game and saying it's really good because apparently I really like movies. Apparently, um, even though you haven't seen... You just saw Jaws the other day. Boom! Yeah, he's not right about that one, ladies and gentlemen. That is correct. Uh, I don't know because I wouldn't call... It, it's weird. I don't know why... It's wh- such a weird... Dis- you're describing so you're describing something with by just saying it's another medium. True, and see, here's an example which is gonna make what I said flawed, because I loved Horizon Zero Dawn, I loved the first Last of Us, but I wouldn't describe either one of those games as making me feel like it was a movie. So what does I, that? I, I'm gonna I'm gonna kill myself. What the hell does that mean? It makes you feel like you're in a movie. I've never felt like I'm in a movie. I, I'm, I've I'm, been watching movies for over 20 years, and I've never been like, yo, man, I just was in that movie. I'm going to try one more time to explain it. <laughs> Maybe we should into just the, move on. I'm, well, I'm, I'm gonna, just beyond baffled. Well, I'm going to say, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try to explain it one more time. And if it doesn't make sense, I'm just going to throw in the towel. It's not going to make keep... sense, but you can... I, okay. You have the floor... Actually, no, I've already said this. Let's just move on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, email email us or something if you if you have any idea what the hell Jordan's talking about or if you agree for some reason and you're also a psychopath. My, unless you have anything else to say on this subject. Control's a good game. Play it. My next game, I just finished actually. It is Doom Eternal. Doom Eternal is balls to the walls. Metal as hell. 
run and gun. No, it's not run and gun game. FPS Madness. I love it so much. Came out in March or something. Of course, it is the sequel to Doom 2016, which is also phenomenal. I don't know which one's better, actually. I think that this... First thing I will say about this game, and I don't know if it's better or not, but it is even faster. And that is insane, because the first game is super fast, but they had extra things as a shot. One of your shotguns comes with a grappling hook. You can shoot demons with the grappling hook, zoom to them, shoot them in the face, or you can like spin around them with the grappling hook to launch yourself further. It's, uh, it's so fun. That's, that's why I play games at the end of the day. It's, it, they're fun. And this game is absolute fun incarnate. There's when you glory kill. So sometimes in the game you'll you'll wi you'll wiggle wiggle, wi wither. That's a word, right? You'll wither a, a demon. That doesn't sound right. You'll wither a demon down to it's like final HP. Whittle. Whittle. There we go. Wither is like an old person or something withering away. <clears throat> I really thought you were gonna say when you wiggle a demon down to his last health. Yeah, man, wiggle. <laughs> I'm like, yes. <laughs> but, I mean, so, and they'll start flashing orange and blue, and you'll, you can run up to them and basically rip them in half, or cut their head off, or punch them so hard that their eyeballs pop out of their head. Yes. And then when you do that, it lets you go even faster. So you, you can grappling hook onto a demon when he's flashing, punch him, and that makes you go even faster. And then... You can get up to two dashes, so you can shoot a demon with the grappling hook, which will zoom you to that demon. Then you can do a glory kill, which will make you go even faster. And then, as soon as you can do that, if you want, you can go boom, boom, and like, zoom. That's the only way I could put it, is zoom. The only thing that works is an onomatopoeia. That's how fun this game is. It's a damn onomatopoeia. I'm literally just imagining... Is that the right? Attack on Titan levels of battle. That's a really Just, good way to describe it. Holy shit. It's like shit. Attack on Titan with more blood. Oh my more god. blood. Oh my god. And you're fighting demons. Oh, that's amazing. It's There's no story. Who gives a shit? You're just a guy who's pissed off because these cunt demons are trying to kill you. But you run around and you don't let them, Jordan. No, the you don't let them. The story is you're a good guy. No, and you're they're not. bad. Uh, yeah, you are. You're killing you're kinda, demons. Yeah, you are. You are. You're the good Demon, guy. Demons but are bad. But you just go around and kill people. I think at the end you might kill angels. I don't know, but they kind of look like demons, but they have wings. You don't care, though. You kill them. You, you just kill them. You don't give a shit. Shit. That's not a word. You don't care. That's what I'm trying. I'm like, I can feel the Doom Slayer in me. Wait, no. That sounded kind of... <laughs> that the Doom... Wait. Is... What? I'm getting very excited I talking about tell, this game. Dear God. It is very good, very fast. Not, it's like 10 hours, 10 to 15 hours long, I would say, depending how fast you play the game. And you, you play it at the speed of light, no, no matter how fast, slow you play it. That's like the, the bar. You can't go below that. So I can't. It's so fun, so frenetic, so fast. It's so fast. It is so fast. I know just. He is so Talked excited that he is I'm like sweating shaking. blood. I'm sweating blood, exactly. Just dear You get to the end, you'll, you'll get to these people, because some, some of the demons can talk, and they'll be oh, like, you, ah, you kill those first. Master. No, 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 they don't call you master. They're like, don't kill me. I'll suck your dick. Or, <laughs> or something. And you just punch them in half, or or shoot their head off. Dude, I was thinking he that was... He ain't interested in a dick sucking. He's the Doom Slayer. I, I don't think that's his name. I Doom, think it is. Doom Guy. Doom Guy. The Doom Slayers might be the bad guys. He's Doom Guy. Do Doom Slayer makes me think that, holy shit, he's the Goblin Slayer of his universe. Damn, Goblin Slayer is good. Anyway, it made me think that when you said Master, I was like, holy shit, Doom Guy is secretly a demon. He is like, I, who cares? If you, like, if you don't want to know anything... I guess skip ahead. I mean, everybody. But he's basically games. a god, yeah, or an angel or something. That's he's, I think he's an angel. Is basically what he is, who was tasked to protect humanity, and even these people that were supposed to. Basically, the time has come for humanity to die or something. And Doom is like, no, or Doom guy's like, no, no, it's not. Sorry, <laughs> heaven, it's not. I don't know if it's it's not really heaven. It's weird. It's weird. The story doesn't really make any sense, but. It Who cares? Have, it's kind have, of dumb fun. Yeah, I mean, this game has been 
Doom has been a franchise that's been badass since the beginning. And why all this is going on, why you're literally Mortal, Mortal Kombat-ing bitches in half, it's got one of the most badass metal soundtracks you will ever hear in a game. Oh, this might be my game of the year. This is so good. <laughs> Fair it does have its problems, though. Yes, it does. So, wait, how did you know that? I'm agreeing with you because your judgment of this game is expertise. Yes, I'm expertise. Expertise. Oh, call my mom. Okay, so, <laughs> I say first of all, it gets a little too upgradey and stuff, which is cool because one of the things that the upgrades do is let you move it faster than the flash. But there's so many upgrades, and there's a lot of a lot of the stuff that I don't really care about, um, especially stuff through the map. With you, you, you can upgrade it, and it lets you find stuff on like collectibles and stuff on the map easier, stuff like that. And those collectibles are cool. I definitely found some. Some of them are little, basically toys, little action figures of of Doom Guy or of oh, the cool. demons yeah. or something, which is really fun. So I have to ask: Is there a is there ever a time in the game? Because you beat this, right? Yeah. Oh, that's right. Duh. Uh, is there a slow mo time, like where you, uh, not like where you slow down time? There but where is you- a. It might be a perk. I'm not sure, but if you get down to one health, there's a there's a one up, and if you get down to one health and you get hit again, it, if you have a one up on you, it goes down to slow motion until for a certain amount of time. I think. Okay. Cool. I w- I was just wondering, like how. Compared to how epic it is to kill stuff super fast and glory kill them, I was like, I wonder if you can like kill somebody super glory, super like amazingly, just like in slow motion no, time. Oh, okay. You can't. In my head, it looks. There's you do than, one thing in this game, and that's kill demons. Fair enough. And you do it very fast, Hell and that yeah. is the point of the game. There is some platforming, which I don't mind. It's not the best, but it's probably one of the best for a first person shooter. So that's that's fine. Um, as far as problems, though, I, I did speak about some problems. The Like I said, the upgrade tree is a little too much. I think that for some people, the cutscenes in the background on, on Doom Guy might be a little too much. But I didn't mind it because there's only a handful of cutscenes in the entire game and they're probably at most 30 seconds long. There is The last two boss fights are cool, but they last way too damn long. Way too damn long. I actually, on the second to last fall, so I had asked me if I wanted to, like, put on a special suit, basically. I, and I was like, okay, yeah, I'll try, I'll try this to see what the difference is. I beat him in, like, half the time it took me, but otherwise. So, I'm like, okay, this this is kind of, this needs to be tuned down or something. And then the last, very last boss was also way, it, way too long. I don't know if I died a single time, but it took me, like, 30 minutes to beat him. So that I think that that's too long. It's really cool. You fight this massive demon the size of a skyscraper. So that's <clears throat> that's pretty cool. Nice. The sword is really cool. It's, you get this really badass lightsaber. Except it's not for wieners. That's right. It's a lightsaber for men. Hell for the yeah. Doom guy. It's a big ass claymore. I'll cut you in half, Luke. Should... More like Duke. Wait, that's an actual name. Poop. Poop Skywalker. Yeah, there we go. You, you, it can one shot. I'm, I'm stuttering. You can one shot the demons with that. I'm, I've gone back. You've noticed I've gone back to the massive praise. It's not perfect. I swear it's not perfect, but it's pretty close. I mean, when yeah. all, there, there are also a couple levels that seem like they go on forever, and there are these basically hell knights that are a little too hard for. They have a little too. It's not that they're hard. They take a while to beat because they have a shield. They have a, a gun. They have a... I think they have a sword. And they have a dog. And they have all of this. And sometimes you'll be fighting them with other ads. You know, you know what ads are? What there's other, pe- other demons around fighting you? Yes. You'll be I, fighting. Yes, I, know, I, yeah. I didn't hear the term ads until like last year. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's a, it's a common term in, when you play MMOs. Okay. Well, I'm not a nerd, so I, I don't play MMOs. But... So that's a they, that fight can be kind of fun almost if it's in a one-on scenario and there aren't too many other demons. But if you're, you know, you got all these other elite demons and you're fighting some little wiener demons and you're fighting this Hell Knight guy, it's like kind of come on. This is 
this is just annoying. Yeah. I was but say, besides, I, was say, I think there was one level like that, and the boss, the, there, I think there were only two real bosses. And besides that and those two bosses, the game is pretty na- damn near close to perfect. Nice. That's what's up. Now, that being said, there are, wait, no, I've got, I've got other games on my list. Game's good. Okay. Cool. Um, I absolutely recommend it. Tell your mom to go buy it for you. Say, Mom, I don't need those Fortnite bucks. I need Doom Eternal. And you say it like that. You say, I want Doom Eternal. I'm going to say, call your mom a bitch. Don't call your mom a bitch. Your mom loves you. Tell your mom you love her. Give her a hug. Unless your mom didn't get you Doom, then call her a bitch. No, no. Because then, that, that, what is that going to do? That's not going to get you Doom. That's true. That's not going to get you Doom. That's true. I think I need to take some Ritalin. Okay. <laughs> cool. This game has made my ADHD worse. Holy Don't tell your mom that. Okay, my next game on my list is gonna be bittersweet for me. It's, to- I'm literally hotter. It's I think I've raised the t- the temperature in the room. I think I, I, I I'm still stuttering. <laughs> I think I turned the AC on with my body heat nice. from talking about Doom. That's what's up. My next one is gonna be bittersweet for Ryan to hear. It's gonna be Borderlands Three. You son of a, I don't care. I know. Uh, I now granted. Take the main story, put it in a bucket, throw the bucket away. I hate the main story of this damn game. You don't like the VTuber main plot? I would rather slit my wrist and sit in a bathtub of bleach. Like it is that okay, that was kind of hardcore, sorry. No, that was awesome, baby. <laughs> yeah. No, that was it wasn't hardcore. It was a little emo edgy, but it wasn't it wasn't uh, hardcore. I You had the same hardcore outlook as Zack Snyder there, boss. Yeah. Sorry. That's, what if Superman? Was just kind of shit. That'd be good, right? Yeah, man. Man, no? <laughs> no, y'all see. Y'all see. Y'all will see. Uh, I. There is so much tomfoolery and stupidness and goofiness of this game, but damn, is it fun. It is so much fun. I. Is it? I, I, I'm going to let you go. Okay. I'm going to let you out the late, 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 leash. Leash? I'm going to go take some medicine real quick. Okay. I'm just going to... So... Can they hear that? I mean, probably. I mean, I'm not going to edit it out. It's, this is going to be... a bad editor. I know. It's fine. It's going to be pretty of a, a raw dog episode. Somebody told me once, they came up to me and was like, yo, man, you trying to get raw dogged? And I was like... What? Yeah, yeah it, it was weird. Okay, sorry, yeah, sorry. It, it, was, it was real weird. But anyway... um. Borderlands 3. What the hell did that have to do with literally anything? I was, because I used the word raw dog, and that's where I learned the word raw dog, because this guy came up to me and was like, yo man, you're trying to get raw dog? Then I was man like, came up to you and asked you if you wanted to do, do it raw dog. <laughs> yes. It was, it was a very weird day at work, okay? And at anyway. Work. Yes. Now let me get back to talking about Borderlands 3. Man, this table's so close to me right now. Okay. So, Borderlands 3, I thoroughly enjoyed just the tomfoolery, the badassness of the guns, and damn, the DLC is good. If only we had a good villain for this game. Now, granted, I know Borderlands 2, you know, had its flaws too. It was still a good game from what I've heard because I haven't played it. What? You told me you played Borderlands 2, you son of a bitch. I have played Borderlands 2. I have not beaten Borderlands 2. I know. But how Jake does listen to this. Nah, he's going to kick my teeth in. So, I really did enjoy this game. It was... What was that? Dear goodness. That's wrong. Ah. <laughs> it was very enjoyable. I... It really comes down to just... So, this is, this is going to be controversial. I... This game is on my list for this level of enjoyment because of how good the and enjoyable the DLCs are. Now, granted, I know that might not be one of the... Some people might say, you know, oh, it's not part of the main game, so you can't consider it, you know, a good game. Now, granted, this might... This you is clearly liked the game. You played it almost too much, even before you had the DLC. Yeah, true. Uh, I, I think I've probably... I don't know how many hours I put into it. I mean, check Steam if you're curious, really. But the, uh, the amount of... Now, granted, now I'm not... When I say this... I know there's tons of work and such that went into the main game, but the amount of work and polish that went into the DLC stories are incredible. There is literally one where a two people are trying to get married, and you're 
trying to stop a cult worshiping group of individuals, which is a cult. But there we they, go. No, we know. Okay, so is there a cult that's worshiping a cult? No, it's a cult that is basically worshiping Cthulhu, ah. which is so badass. And there's ton, just like Borderlands, there are tons of crazy, not relevant side quest to of do. Of course, it's Cthulhu. Yes. God, of course, they would make a... It, now, granted, I don't ever think they call it Cthulhu. I think they have some kind of Borderlands-y name for it. But anyway, one, one of the things that is so enjoyable of that, there is this side quest, and you meet this guy randomly... And he's like, I gotta get down because he's a fish man. Um, he's a fish man. Yeah, he's he has like gills. Not a. Oh, I don't remember there ever being those kind of people in Borderlands. It's this is a different planet or whatever. Because ah. you're you're on you're on the, whatever planet. You do. I forgot you go to different planets in that game. Yeah, you. It's whatever planet it is, and this is a side. You just meet him, and he's like, Yo, man, you gotta help me do all this stuff. Uh, so you gotta like cut. It's an ice planet. It's because you got to cut a hole in the ice for him to get down for his queen's coronation or whatever. And for some reason, I had the wild inclination that I thought there was going to be an underwater kingdom adventure sort of a thing. Thank God there wasn't. If there wasn't. I, there wasn't. I was, Thank God there wasn't because there's never been a good section in underwater section in video games. Mm, I, I can't think of one. to. No, uh, no one can. Uh, yeah. Oh. So you help this guy, and I'm thinking, okay, there's an inkling of a chance they did a small underwater kingdom mission, something. I get to, oh shit, maybe his queen is evil, and I got to battle his queen. Did you or something. want this? Yeah, because I'd be thinking, oh please no, please no. Please. I, I, I wanted this because underwater missions are always bad, well, always well, bad. Now, granted, I wasn't thinking I was going to swim. I was thinking I was just going to take a portal, boom. I was going to be, I don't, you know, there was going to be some kind of loading screen or whatever. I wouldn't have to swim. I wouldn't have to worry about any of those dumb mechanics. All underwater. Yeah, but you had to swim. But it would have been a kingdom underwater, and I could look up, and it'd be like you know glass or whatever above ah, me, or okay. whatever you know. It, it would be underwater. So the, it'd be humans for some reason living underwater. Yeah, but they have gills and whatever bullshit. So wait, what? Yeah, they, they have. It's a fish dude. Gills. He has gills. Okay? Why wouldn't they be living underwater? They are. But you're confusing me. <laughs> okay, so you help this crazy motherfucker get his suit to wear for his queen's coronation. And it's not a normal suit. Of course, it's a fucking fish. And so you're thinking, okay, he's going to do something with this fish. He's going to hop in this hole. And, you know. Raw dogs. Yep. Raw dog is way down to his queen to, for her coronation. Motherfucker comes out full fish on top full of. Full fish. Full fish. Down to, like, his knees. And is like, all right, I have my suit on for my queen. And I shall go to the coronation now. Just fucking fish, whole whole fish on his body, down to his knees. Just, and you're thinking, what the fuck? This is so weird. What the fuck, man? But yeah, that, really glad I didn't play this game. I know you would you would have hated some of this dialogue. Dear God, whatever his name was, he had it, he was so stupid. I um, think if I ever go back and finish this game, I'm gonna have to mute the characters. The dialogue it's some of the worst I have. I heard some of the people on a podcast I was talking to talking about how bad the dialogue was. I'm like, oh, that can't be true. Bolin Sue had some good dialogue. And even if it's bad, there's no way it's this bad. And five minutes into the, five minutes into the game, I have my head in my hands. This is some of the worst. I wish you could shoot every new character in the game. Every new character is dog shit. Every new character is dog shit. The villains are dog shit. The weird lolly girl is dog shit. The freaking... Everyone. Everyone. Every, all the new characters are bad. Dialogue-wise. I only played for like... I think I might have played for like five hours. So uh, there might be some better ones afterwards. But that uh, that black chick on like the first planet you go to, she's awful. I, it's just... Uh, oh, it's... Oh, oh, it's... Oh. Well, you, but you are that was the asshole brings down... The mood section of the conversation. You are entitled to your own opinion. I also agree that some of the dialogue is cringy and redundant and retarded, but it is, to me, it is hilarious. And I thoroughly enjoyed this game. I cannot wait 
to see if we're going to get another DLC. I loved as stupid as some of the stuff was in the newest DLC inside of the psycho's mind or whatever it's called. Uh, <laughs> me, me and a friend were playing it and we got to kill a guy that Did you say was, me and him. Yeah. I, Who yeah. the hell are you? <laughs> You're talking about uh, bump? bump? Yeah, bump. Okay, you just said me and him. I don't know. No one knows who that. No one even knows who bump is. That's true. So I mean, but me it and, sounds really weird to say me and him. I like it's some kind of ethereal being. Now that we've said he is an ethereal being, but now that we've said it multiple times out loud, it does sound weird. So me and bump were playing this, and we actually got to kill this dumb enemy. Just not even a main boss. It was just a side fucker that was so annoying. Uh, what is his name? Uh, like he was. His name was Bullet Sponge can't bullet sponge will not die akins or something like that and when i say that guy took all of both of our ammo it did and it was just we were just determined to kill that fucker and he died he died we didn't have any ammo afterwards and it was a little hairy for a little bit but we it, it was it was just that retarded moment of this is so stupid that this is in a game but it is so much fun because it is stupid. Um, so I would say if you, even if you want to play this alone or if you got a band of buddies, you know, that want to play this together, I'd say check out Borderlands 3. It's thoroughly enjoyable and I highly recommend I the DLC. Need to, I need to go back and play it. I need Be to at least try. Because I, I can, and you know, when I say I enjoy this game, I really do. It has me laughing at sometimes. It has me frustrated at other times. And granted, I'm not saying the dialogue is good because it's not. There are some, there are every once in a blue moon. And when I say once in a blue moon, there's maybe like, I don't know, two to three minutes of good dialogue in the whole game. Um, in, the, in like a 34 hour, 30 to 40 hour game. Well, yeah, but most of the stuff they say is retarded. But like, wouldn't you laugh? <laughs> I swear some of the things you would, you, they were saying you would laugh at. And I was just thinking to myself, I want to hang myself. Uh, yeah, I, I want to throw myself off the balcony. Well, yes, I laugh at it because I know it's stupid. Like I don't, I don't laugh. There's at stupid it. good and stupid bad, and I yeah. really think that this sits in the firm, firmly in the stupid bad. But if you like Borderlands, I'm sure you'll you'll like it. Oh yeah, I thoroughly, maybe not the dialogue, but <laughs> I I, I liked a lot about this game. The shooting is still pretty good. The loot grind, which is really what the game's about, is still Borderlands. It's, it's going to have at least some of the charm from. The weird, the the old characters, Scooter, and that fat woman, that Scooter's husband, or his the person who <laughs> killed him. Wait, did I say husband? <laughs> Scooter's wife, That's or perfect, or some, or his killer, or yeah, <laughs> or something. It's got Reese from Borderlands. The oh my, Tales from the Borderlands, which I think might be the best Borderlands game. Pretty sad that Gearbox didn't make the best Borderlands game, but. <laughs> I think that if you like Borderlands, it sounds like you'll probably like this. Oh, yeah, most definitely. All I have to say is my ending thoughts on Borderlands 3 is that Claptrap needs to be turned into a chastity belt. He's always going to He's always gonna be there. He's awful, and he's supposed to be awful. God. And oh, I don't even like the game. And Claptrap. Just I, I don't know. Yeah, Claptrap's not great. Claptrap's Clap never been great. Claptrap brings out something to me that might be darker than Smash. What's next? Hmm. So, my last game that I have on here for new games this year is Animal Crossing: New Horizons. But uh, you, uh, you, you, you can't beat an Animal Crossing game. I didn't beat it. Whoa! That's right. That's right. I did put around 100 hours in it, though. I will say, according to our friend Jake, your island is lame. What? Jake says your island is lame. I don't. It is. I mean, everybody's island. It is kind of lame. So Everybody's island's lame, unless you know life this game, which is sad and beautiful at the same time. I mean, a, a lot of people have much better islands than I do. I think for Halloween, I've got a pumpkin, small pumpkin patch, a arch that has a couple pumpkins on it, a jack-o'-lantern, and a couple tables that I think are made out of pumpkins. And I haven't played the Halloween update. I just want a Godzilla statue. Yeah! So, I have undoubtedly played more of this game than any other game this year, which in my mind pretty much automatically means it's got to be in the running for 
for my game of the year, even though I have fallen off pretty hard. I played, I think, every Animal Crossing, except for maybe one up until this one, but this is also by far the most I've played of any Animal Crossing since the first one. The It's kind of the same thing as always, though, the reasons I like it. It's really charming. The villagers are, are very sweet and colorful and funny for the most part. There are some that I despise as much as I despise some of the characters in Borderlands. Some of them will go away, others, unfortunately, will not, and I don't know what to do. So I uh, haven't actually gotten into a lot of the stuff that a lot of people like about the new one, though. I have not done much of crafting or changing of the island at all. I think I have one bridge. That's it. I can't... I, I haven't even gotten KK Slider to my island, which I think you have to have a three-star island. I think I have a two-star island. Well, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. KK Slider doesn't, it's not like the quote in game when you finally get a five star island. KK Slider shows up and has a big concert. KK Slider is rolling around up to three star islands. Yeah. He's better than that. Not not right now. He's on, he's hit, it's Corona's hits. <laughs> Apparently not. And he ain't getting many gigs. Fair enough. Fair on my enough. island, no mask is no problem. Hell yeah. We have a problem. Oh. Damn. Any, <laughs> despite that though, or maybe because of that. I don't have any, because that's not what I played Animal Crossing for. I played Animal Crossing to get an equivalent debt that I could pay off at any time I wanted. I will say I do like my panda villager. She's pretty cool. I've got a unicorn villager and... Hold up, what? A unicorn. No, I heard you. I just wanted to hear you say it again. And a reindeer. Damn. I got Eric and Julian. Oh. Is his name Julian? I, I can't help you with that. I got Eric... And gay unicorn. You got that cool looking chameleon dude, red guy. He's not a villager. How long? I thought you played this game for a lot. I don't know. I'm probably 20, 20. I don't know how long I played this game. I don't you going to say 20 hours or 20 minutes? I played it more than 20 minutes. Okay. Probably <laughs> played it 25 minutes. No, I, I think I put, I don't know, like, I don't know how many hours. It feels I, like you were really hard into this game as well for a little bit. And I thought you had played it, I guess, more. Yeah, I, I don't know. It was one. Of, it was going to be one of those things where I played it like as I went to sleep, sort of, and then I just got into other things, anime and blaze ball, and but you don't have to. I know. Actually, play blaze ball. I, I know, man. But it's literally it stays on your monitor, I know. and you look at it, and that's it. That's the game. And then you blink, and you've missed a whole bunch of crazy shit, like a black hole, and. A demon and people spinning fire and a team going to the outer realms and then their pitchers get replaced by a pitching machine and yeah, it's terrible. I don't know how long I'm going to play the game though. I haven't really had any time with it, any significant time with it in months. I've picked it up here and there. I've almost kind of gotten bored of it. I don't know. Maybe I just went too hard. Maybe if I had actually done the construction stuff, or maybe that's what I need to do. Because one thing that I don't like about the game, the villagers, while they look really good and they're real cute or whatever, they don't have a, as much personality, I think, as the original did. In the original, they would interact with each other more. They would ask, hey, can you go get my comic book from Stan and bring it to me? The villagers don't tell you to, they're basically, they're like NPCs in a game. I don't know. They don't do anything. The villagers don't do anything. They're just there. Except walk around and look nice. Yeah. They're just there. They it doesn't really... feel like they live there as much as it did in the original. Okay. Fair enough. I can, I can see that. I do love the game though. I think it's super chill. I think it's a nice game to wake up in the morning and check the st turn up prices and pick any weeds you have, get get your crops, sell anything, do a little fishing, et cetera, and so on while you're sipping your coffee and maybe reading or watching the news if you want to get depressed. Yeah, I, I, could, I could definitely see that. It's definitely from the little bit I played and then just dropped all video games pretty much like a hot rava lock. Uh, I really did a, enjoy it. A hot rava lock? Mm-hmm. It's a new thing. <laughs> uh, yeah, I I really did enjoy Animal Crossing. It is charming. It is adorably addictive and just 
You know, apparently, sometimes you put a whole bunch of shit on your beach, it looks ugly. Cause Wait, you trying to make fun of me? No, I'm, make, I'm talking about myself. I put, for some reason, I thought it would be a good idea to line my beach with palm trees and then put a bonfire. And then I was like, all right, I'm going to sell snow cones on my beach. But I have some of that stuff on my beach. I have a popcorn machine, a couple of vending machines, a cotton candy machine, a rock climbing machine, or not a rock climbing, a rock climbing wall. I have a surfboard on the beach. I've got two soccer goals on the beach with the volleyball. No, that's cool. That's smart. I like that. Yeah, I've got some stuff on the beach, but it's it's a beach town, baby. We got those got those beach town vibes. I ain't I mean, I don't know, maybe in the future Bezos will buy me out and we can put an Amazon store, you know, we can replace nooks. But for now it's just a cozy little beach town. I'd play that game just Somebody bigger than Tom Nook comes in, takes him out, right? Nobody's bigger than Tom Nook. He's so smart. He's so scary. I think Tom Nook gets a bad rap. I think that He's the man right. lets you pay. There was no interest, and you can pay him back. I haven't paid him in weeks. <laughs> He's good. See? See, he, he poisoned you. This started off fake. It's real now. He gave you Corona. <laughs> See, Tom Nook gave you Corona because you didn't pay him. Pay up. Shit. He's going to take my house. Tom Nook. He's going to take your house. He's going to take it. You're going to be the only person ever in Animal Crossing to get your house repossessed. Come back. Where's your house? Tom Nook's like. It's hmm. just floating in the in the ocean. And you just turn around and see Tom Nook just standing there. With Isabel. <sighs> Isabel's not real. I like a lot. <laughs> I like a lot about this game. I like a ton about this game. I haven't been playing it as much as I thought. I really thought I would play more of the Halloween event, but there's just not that much to do. I'm probably, in fact, I definitely will play it more in the Halloween event. I just don't know how much. I think I played it yesterday, actually. I did not check my turn turnip prices today, son of a bitch. But I think I'm probably going to play this game kind of on and off as the months go by. Nice. I think it's a really good game designed for that, basically. Oh, yeah, most definitely. Um... Yeah, it's great. I, I probably will play it again someday, and I say probably super loosely because who knows what my It's life. a game with no, there's no consequences. True. Sometimes if you're feeling bored, you might want to play the game a little bit. If, you, if you're watching something on TV that you're not particularly interested in, you can pop on Animal Crossing. You can play it for five minutes, and if you don't do anything, that's fine. You can play it for five hours. And if you don't do anything, or if you do everything, that's fine. That's the beauty of the game is that they're... As much as I love Doom or Runeterra, these are games that you could definitely easily lose in. If you stay still for two seconds in Doom, you're probably going to die. If you're not paying attention to Runeterra, you could e easily lose. Animal Crossing isn't like that. It's the exact opposite. There is no fail state. That's definitely true. It's definitely true about Animal Crossing. It's a great game. Solid. I, I don't know. I, I definitely agree with everything you said. I need to get back to, to playing it. What's your name your island, by the way? I, think, I know you, we've talked about this before, this. but it's uh, it's like a play on of Tortuga, but it's oh wait, is this? It, I used an Animal Crossing island name generator, and I think it, I think it took the name. Come on, man, you're better than this. I know. I think it took the name Tortuga. Tortuga. No. I literally came up with a better name than whatever you, yours is. Maybe. I guarantee you, it's not better than Tortuga. It is. It's like a combination of. Like Tortuga and whatever kind of animal Tom Nook is, I think. Tanooki? Yeah, it's like a combination of those two words. I can't remember it. That's all the I information I have for you. You used a name generator. I wanted to have a cool name, so I went to Google and typed no, in. No, you want a stupid name. That's the fun of it. Oh, man. My name is, my Animal Crossing Isle's name is Isle de Jefe. It's pretty good. It's really stupid. Pretty good. Reminds it's funny. Me, reminds me of Cow and Chicken. Why does it remind you of Cow and Chicken? Because I think there's an episode where uh, Cal becomes like a mob boss or something. And it's like, you call me Hefe. Call me Hefe. Yeah, and that, Is that's that what, what Cal sounds like? Uh, Probably. If I, yeah, sure. I didn't really like that show that much. I, I didn't like the art. I liked it, but my mom wouldn't let me watch it because she was like, you're going to start worshiping the devil. So Because of Cow and Chicken? Yeah, apparently. I mean, it was a weird show. It was a weird show. What about you? You got anything else? For some reason, before I double-checked with you, the actual complete uh, 
definition and description of this topic, I wrote down The Last of Us 2 because I thought it was strictly speaking of games we'd beaten this year. You hate that game. Yes. Why uh, would you talk about that in your game of the year? I don't know. I think it, th- it was, well, one, it's the first thing I wrote down because. Because you secretly like it. No. I hate that fucking game. Uh, no, and I think it's the first thing I wrote down because at the start of this list, I was grasping at straws because I hadn't beaten and or played a whole bunch of games this year. Uh, and so it was the literally the first one that I thought about that came to my mind. So I wrote it down and I definitely am not going to talk about it because I don't need to bring up those feelings again. Because so what you're saying is people should play The Last of Us 2 because it will make their connection to The Last of Us 1 even better and they'll appreciate both games immensely and they think and you think that it's definitely not a waste of $60. If you can get The Last of Us 2 on sale. No, I thought you hated it. Now, now hear me out. I, the Last of Us 2 is a game that I feel that if you enjoyed the first one, you should play the game and form your own opinion of it. But I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed the first one. And I utterly hate the second one. Like, passionately hate the second one. And it is one of those cases of gamer throwing tantrums sort of a thing. I don't like the particular way they wrote the story or this, that, and the other. You've heard everybody bitching moan about it. You've heard people make videos. You've heard... I think most people have... If they're going to play The Last of Us 2, they've already played it or they know whether they're going to play it or not. So I don't think we really need to get into it. Yeah, no. I I don't want to get into it. Uh, it, Like, it it doesn't have a bad taste in my mouth. I, you know, I'm not gonna shit on the people that make it or anything like that I, I i'm still interested in what they're gonna do as a studio but it's definitely one of those things where i'm just like mm, you know I, I played it you know cool uh, that's really it on that the uh the next one i have on my list is gonna be soccer wars oh my gosh you have soccer wars on your on your game of the year watch watch list mm-hmm. yeah just gonna sit back, okay? Because I know you. Th- oh man, you hate this game. I don't. I don't hate the game. I don't know anything about it. I think it's. It's not your type of game. It, it so Soccer Wars for those of you that don't know, it's a remake they put out for the PlayStation Four this year, and it is a. What did I say? Remake. Yeah, you said it's a remake. Oh my bad. It's at. It's a new version of the it's game. Like the fourth or fifth game in the series, isn't it? I forgot. It's not reboot. What's it called? I don't know. Man, whatever. Uh, so, you know, it's called Soccer Wars, and it's a dating sim that's mixed <laughs> mixed with a action game where you go around and you're thrown into this city, and you are the leader and captain of this team of girls that fight monsters with mechs and that's the whole entire game pretty much and it it's one that i really enjoyed i like the story i like the character development the characters and the combat wasn't that bad either it was definitely one of those games that i looked at it thought about it and then bought it and then kind of blinked and i was done with the game and i definitely Enjoyed it. <laughs> what? Are you sure this is on your game of the year watch list? Yes. You don't sound as passionate about, about this game as the others. The others you were talking to more in depth, and this one you're kind of like, yeah, I enjoyed it and I beat it. Well, I it guess I was good. just ma- I guess I was just making light of it because I I assume you didn't. Want me to go too in depth about? I mean, don't, don't go in depth and tell us well, story no. beat by beat, but tell us why you enjoyed it in, I, in a little more depth if you really liked it that much. I really did enjoy this game because it's different from. I think it's a a hard thing to do to combine a dating simulation mixed in with an action game, mixed in with a story, 
Uh, granted, I haven't played. It was the first game in the series that I played, and it's a good introduction for that. And I don't. I guess I just really liked it because I enjoy anime and I enjoy action games. And this kind of can definitely slap those two things together on a board, and was like, all right, this is a game. This can make people pay sixty dollars for it. Uh, it's definitely one of those things where it. Uh, a lot of my decisions and stuff in the game kind of came down to you know, who I want the character to end up with. And it, it is sweet. There There's a sweet ending as far as story beats go and stuff. And there's, you know, some tomfoolery and some blushment that can happen. Yeah, blushment's a weird word. I don't think it's a real word, actually. Um, probably not. Don't look it up in the dictionary because it doesn't exist. Uh, I like this game, though. It was The combat wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. Because obviously, it <laughs> they put a lot of time and energy into the the whole dating simulation of everything. Blushment is a brand of blush. Oh, cool. Well, the more you know. But I think if you like anime and you like romance, and I can't really say if you like action, because if you like action, you definitely probably would enjoy that particular section of this game. But if you like anime and you like romance and you're okay with mediocre action combat controls, I think you'd like this game. I can't believe... Okay. Okay. I, I won't say too much because I didn't play the game. I think the game has that lazy anime aesthetic that I hate in, like down into my bones. Hate hate it with the nice passion. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I've only seen a few screenshots and the box art. I don't want to play a game that has bad action in it, but I know some people like it, and I'm not going to get mad if you do. Fair enough. I can appreciate that. Uh, it's definitely... It, it, Isn't that like, we, like that every Japanese card game visual vibe? Yeah, I can definitely see where it would come off that way. Uh, I don't know. I guess when you really get down to the nitty-gritty of it, it's, you know, there is voice acting, there is... The animation and stuff and it's in my opinion it's done well it's not just you know thrown together with some b-listers and stuff there's actually some there's people that put talent into the game obviously they didn't have a very good team that worked on the combat side of things but everything else is really good so yeah i think it's happy go lucky that's not a thing well, that's de- happy go lucky is definitely a thing. Why did you randomly say that? Oh, that sounds like something they would say at the end of an anime. Happy go lucky. <laughs> I I think I was trying to give this game a rating or tell people if they should play it or not, and I just kind of ended well, up. With, is this is it on your game of the year watch list or not? It is. Yeah. So then people should play it, right? Yes, I I, I can back. I would bully anyone to playing any one of the games on my list. Okay, fair enough. I mean, you bullied me. I into- feel passionate about them fair enough what's next on your list okay so the last thing on my list is a game i wanted to have sorry i just kicked you i wanted to have a game on my list that did not come out this year but i did play and beat for the first time this year and that is the fantastic undertale i've been meaning to play this game for years i've actually owned it for years i will not speak about the story at all in this game, because that is the main focus of the game, but I will say that it is fantastic. One of probably the best video game stories I have ever played. I will move on. Um, there's a. I will talk about aspects of the story. Actually, it's really interesting. You can play completely pacifist. You can kill everything in the game. I chose to play pacifist, and I, I literally, you know, if I could get around an enemy without doing anything, that's what I did. I either clicked one of the options that said trick the enemy into running away or befriend the enemy or scare the enemy away or just wait until the enemy gets bored, etc. And so I did that for the entire game. I did not hit, I don't think, a, a single enemy if I could get around it. And, and I, I know I didn't. I think I might have hit one enemy one time on accident, but that's fine. It didn't. I think I, Actually, I might have restarted that the game file then because it was really early on but oh and i freaking 
I accidentally did something and I screwed up my game file. So I actually went online, found a like Undertale file site, downloaded the pacifist run up to the point where I was, and played it like that. That's how much I like this game. I was willing to go to those links to finish my pacifist playthrough. Take the story, like I said, I don't want to harp on it too much. It is amazing. It is very interesting as well. It has some, it turns some tropes on their head a lot. The gameplay is fun, but I will say if you're playing a pacifist run, the gameplay is not nearly as in-depth as it probably would be because you're not hitting anybody if you're playing a pacifist run. You're just dodging. So sometimes if the enemy doesn't really do anything before you can trick them to go away, you don't really do anything. You just click a few buttons. But this is... I'm saying almost some things that would sound like they'd be bad, but I still care that much about the game. I still think it is that good. The music is incredible. It's like this, I don't know if it's 8-bit, 16-bit, or whatever, what you would call it. But it's super, it's, it's frankly epic. It's, it's epic in some ways. I think the soundtrack is every bit as good as Doom Eternal in a very different way. But I think that it is immaculate. There's a reason you see Undertale on, all over YouTube and Reddit. Compilations of the music and stuff. It, 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 it makes complete sense. I think the game... I'm, I wish I played it before this year. That's that's the maybe best best compliment I can give it is I wish I had played it earlier. Yeah, that's that's awesome. I didn't know um, it existed until a couple of years ago. It was one of those things a coworker found out I was in, in, into video games, and the first words out of their mouth was, "Have you ever played Undertale?" And you know, I said, "No, y'all know what that is. Never heard of it." Sort of a thing. It wasn't on my radar. And then you're like, you want to play some COD? <laughs> uh, and they literally fire hosed me with information. Uh, really just kind of like they were speaking another language. And even after seeing you play it, still know what the hell they were talking they about. They really just spoiled the whole game for me. I, I still have, one, I can't remember anything they said. And two, it was basically just them. I, it was basically a review of the game. And they were also telling me like how you play the game alongside of their review and then just kept spewing information out about it. I will say that the game, I could see it being kind of gibberish if you didn't play the game because a lot of the names are names of other things or they're fantasy names, so it might not make sense. The characters are also, I don't know if I talked that much about the characters. I think the characters are amazing. Sans and Papyrus are both amazing. If you if you played the game, you know what I'm talking about. And also seeing the seeing you play it was I think you know aside from the internet and stuff was the first time I actually ever looked at the game. So them explaining all this to me, they didn't pull up any visuals with their smartphone or anything like that. So I had no clue what the game looked like either. And they were just and I was just mm -hmm. cool. I can tell this is your favorite game. I'm glad you enjoy it. Um, uh-huh. Just one of those smile and wave or nod and say, mm-hmm, or okay moments, because they were just running all the way through, point A to point Z on this topic. The, the gameplay, I think if I could best describe it as like Undertale, pff, Earthbound meets Bullet Hell, probably the best way to describe it. Oh, that's very interesting. Okay. I can, I, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, definitely, looking at it, uh, just from the name and the logo and stuff, and then seeing you play it definitely wasn't what I expected at all. I also played Delta Rune, which is or chapter one, which is the same guy, Toby Fox. Music is still awesome. Characters are great. Visuals are very similar. So is the the gameplay. I think it's might be a sequel. I think I'm not sure. I would also recommend that. And I don't know when P Delta Rune Part Two is coming out. Delta Rune is also free, so. If you haven't played that yet and you've already played... Uh, definitely play Undertale first. But if you haven't played Deltarune, and it is free. Okay, nice. That's always good to have a... When you enjoy something and the party does different projects and it's free and it's just as quality. That's always good. But yeah, I've thought about playing it, but I still don't know if it's one of those things that I'll like truly enjoy or not. But also I kind of put it in the same realm of 
don't knock it till you try it because that's how I was with Doki Doki Literature Club, and I. Thir- I think it's it's definitely better than Doki Doki Literature Club. I think Doki, I think that's a great game. It's a great horror game, but I think it gets takes way too long to get to the damn point of that game. When it does, it's like holy shit! I I, I had to, I literally had to stop playing the game for like half an hour when the when the when the shoe drops. Oh yeah. But it takes it takes a little takes too long to get to that point. And then at the very end it takes a little long as well. But that's also an excellent game. That, that didn't come out this year and I didn't play it this year. But that's a really good game. Me neither. It's just one of those we- It's a good time to play it too with horror horror month. True. And I, I don't know, I guess I just have Doki Doki in my head as that category of game that's just weird. It's just a weird game. And so when I see things like Undertale or um uh, Axiom Verge, I think that's what it, I don't think that's what it is. Anyway, there is an Axiom Verge, but I wouldn't compare. I, I think I, mean, I wouldn't compare Axiom Verge to either Undertale or Doki Doki. They're both indie games. I think, but that's about it. I think I said the wrong name, but the game inside my brain looks different. I don't know. It's just. Are you, I, I think you're probably I mean, Axiom Verge is an is an indie game. I know that, uh, but I can't remember the game I was going to say. But yes, there, it's one of those things where if it's obscure and different i kind of just put it in the same category as doki doki not necessarily indie just i don't think i don't, I don't even think undertale is obscure anymore i, I guess it is pretty big it's, it's pretty big especially for an indie in, in an indie game true true uh any other things you got any games no i don't have any game more games do you uh none that were none that are really of note talking i put artifact 2.0 on my list but yeah. so you just wrote down games that you played at first yeah kind of at first the list kind of became like a hodgepodge sort of a thing um, okay well we can talk about artifact in a on another episode i did want to mention that of course neither one of us have played all the games this year we c- literally couldn't and of course there are also other games that that have yet to come out that we are both going to play i'm sure of course cyberpunk is coming out in around a month I haven't played Spelunky 2. I want to play that. Demon's Souls Remastered has not come out yet. I want to play Ghost of Tsushima. And that's just a handful. And th- there's probably... I could probably pop out 10 more that have yet to come out or that I just haven't played yet. Oh, yeah. Most definitely. Is. Cyberpunk's definitely the one on the horizon that I'm just... I'm itching. I had, Oh, my goodness. I need to play that game. Yeah, I really wanted to get this episode out before Cyberpunk because, of course, a lot of people are going to be looking at that game to be game of the year. I don't know. I'm trying to keep my expectations, my expectations low. not low, but grounded. That's I don't want to put it. Oh, Cyberpunk and then have it. Oh, this is a good game. Yeah, exactly. I'm not trying to hold it to like a celestial level or anything. I'm definitely grounded is definitely a good word. I, you know, it's one of those, I can't really speak to it because again, I haven't, I think altogether my CD project red, gameplay timeline is maybe three hours and that's me being generous and rounding up if that uh, so I can't really say you know oh this is from CD Projekt Red it's going to be solid because um, I uh, three hours isn't enough to judge a game and uh, I can't play the Witcher 3 I know I know it just doesn't interest me blows me away absolutely blows I, me away I, bl- I know because it, of your because of your game taste, yeah. the worst part about that game is the combat. You don't care about combat as much as, as I do. True. The, the best part about that game is the world building and the story. And the story is what you claim to care about. So I don't understand. It I, just I don't know. It, it doesn't connect up here. I, it's a movie. <laughs> oh, then, now I need to play The Witcher 3. It's a movie. Uh, yeah, so it's definitely going to be... That was an awkward as hell, yeah. I liked it. I like it. Yeah, it was. Yes. There are so many other games that are going to be coming out this year and so many more left to play. I figure we'll probably do our 2020 final game of the year thoughts in January of 2021. I think. I don't know. That could change, of course, at any time. But for now, those are some of my favorite games of the year. Likewise, check them out. And as always, you can reach us on Twitter at a dialogue tree, as well as Instagram, a dialogue tree. Or if you want to email the show, you can a dialogue tree at gmail.com. You can contact us on any of those social media platforms 
and let us know what you think of your favorite game of this year, as well as, you know, what you thought of the games on our list. And maybe we need to add some games to the list that we're going to play next year or, you know, upcoming later this year. You can reach out to Ryan on Twitter at Ryan Divisions. You can reach out to me on Twitter at Asoylunk. And you can also enjoy this show wherever you enjoy podcast. Some of the places being Apple Podcast, Spotify, Pandora, just to name a few. What is that face you are making? What'd you find? Maybe we should. <laughs> okay, we'll wrap this up. Stanky leg also re- <laughs> Stanky leg can also refer to the result of dancing closely with another person. Specifically, odors associated with feminine arousal might be transferred to the leg <laughs> of a dancing partner. Well, he found out the true meaning of stanky leg. <laughs> 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 we would definitely appreciate it if you left us a review on iTunes five stars that would awesomely help us out and you can let us know what you think of the show and tell us what your favorite dance move is the original stanky leg referring to the smell of a woman the smell of a woman's vagina on the leg of her dance partner was popularized in the 1980s the phrase had a surge of popularity when the G. S. Boys song had a music video brought attention to the stanky leg dance. You can reach out to me on Twitter at a sway long. Yeah, don't hit the stupid shit. No. Oh. I'm trying to wrap it up. You can reach out to me on Twitter at a sway long. And I do believe that is going to be everything. In 2015, someone uploaded a video where President Obama was digitally attached to a person doing the stanky leg. It's made it look as though the president had mastered the dance. He was doing it in the Oval Office. And I'm just going to leave you with a couple more examples of stanky leg coming from dictionary.com. Is anyone else so lazy that they'd rather stick their foot in a tie shoe and do the stanky leg until it sits on, or is that just me? And then finally, when she does the stanky leg in the club and then has a stanky person on. <laughs>